Hey there, real quick, uh, for this video, you're gonna wanna use like some sort of headphones or speakers or something. Probably not gonna get the most out of it with just by listening to like your laptop speakers or your phone speaker. So, just saying. Well, hello everyone. Um, I know it's been a few weeks since I've done a, a video and my apologies with Nam and everything and with some family stuff going on, just it simply didn't have the time. But let's uh, talk about transparent overdrives. Now, uh, I think about a year, year and a half ago, I did a video about transparent overdrives and, you know, it was a little corny, I know, but the idea being that when people talk about transparent overdrives, they really don't want transparent overdrives. However, I wanted to take a circuit on the breadboard here and breadboard it. I'll show you the schematic in just a minute and uh, let you decide what you think whenever we take a truly transparent uh, designed uh, circuit. Really simple circuit. Um, no filter, very little filtering on it. We're, tr we're trying to get a full frequency overdrive and a distortion and um, see, see what you guys think. And then we'll also talk about a couple popular pedals topology wise, a, a clone style circuit. Uh, I don't have a clone here right now, so I'll use the Tumnus. Uh, and then uh, uh, the Blues Breaker style circuit, which um, I think the closest to a straight up Blues Breaker I have is the Morning Glory. So it's pretty similar to that. But anyways, uh, we'll take a look at those and look at some EQ graphs and everything. All right, enough yakking. Let's, uh, let's start with my clean tone. I am playing through a Fender Hot Rod Deluxe uh, with my Whitfield Telecaster. <laughs> and at gain straight up, all the way up on this. So uh, this is the overdrive circuit. Now I realize it does sound a bit fuzzy. It's just going to, because I'm not taking away any of that bass up front. Generally when you create an overdrive, you're gonna actually get rid of some bass up front and then add it in on the backside if you need it. So uh, that's the sound of it. Let's, uh, let's take a look at what's going on schematically and we'll look at it like an EQ graph so we can kind of get an idea of what's going on. All right, so this is a cool little program I like to use called Circuit Lab. It's uh, kind of like a very easy spice program. Spice being, we've talked about that before. It allows you to draw schematics and then look at EQ curves and phase relations and voltages and stuff like that as you're drawing it. This is the basic schematic that I'm using. So if we look here, this, uh, this part right here, that's just basically a sine wave. It's just a 400 hertz sine wave. That's the guitar signal coming in through a resistor, through a capacitor, into the op amp. Uh, I have the diode set up here to be more of a soft clipping like you would with an overdrive. The gain, uh, even though it shows like a fixed resistor, it's just because the way I'm using the pot, it's set at about 100K. Uh, actually, I'm wrong, not 100K, that is 500K. And then everything else is pretty standard. So, and uh, what we can do here is go to simulate. And this is kind of give us a rough idea of what's going on EQ wise. Uh, 20 Hertz through about 40, ignore that because your guitar speaker is not going to reproduce that anyways. Maybe not even 60 Hertz, depending on what type of guitar uh, speaker, amp, etc. you're using. So I kind of look more in this area. We can see right here at 40 dB, it's boosting 40 dB basically, um, assuming there's enough headroom. Uh, since we're clipping, we know we're also clipping that signal, but this part isn't going to show that. It's just going to show kind of kind of like the a rough idea of the EQ curve. So even though um, even though I have already uh, made it the parameters as wide as I can to get as full frequency of response as I can, we're still going to take away a bit of bass. Um, not much though, not much. So you can see it's cutting at the very tippy top. We're about 40 dB. And at the area that you can hear it, looks like 
63 dB, so about 20 decibels. So you're going to hear a bit of, bot of if you had a subwoofer hooked up, you he you'd hear some of that. Um, but we're playing through guitar amp, so it's not that huge of a difference. And then we're cutting, uh, starting at almost 8K, we're going to start cutting just a little bit. Now we're not trying to, that's just the limits of our op amp and the analog circuitry in general and the very simplified circuit that we have. Um, you can change some things around and you're always going to um, you're always going to have some sort of trade-off somewhere. So I'll show you what I mean by that. Let's say we get rid of this capacitor. Connect that straight to what would be a, a voltage source. And let's simulate that. Now we do have, we're not losing any bass, but we're losing dramatically more highs. So again, Setting up the op amp up a little bit differently, you're going to um, you're going to have a trade off. Now, so what would happen if we change the diodes to more of a distortion circuit? So we want to hard clip it. Well, let me show you. All right, so not a whole lot of change. Let's listen to the distortion, uh, the circuit set up as a distortion, so we can see if we hear any difference. All right, so you just saw schematically what's going on with the circuit uh, in the overdrive portion. We move the diodes uh, to the hard clipping portion so it's more of a distortion. I'll play you a sound clip from that real quick. So obviously we can hear a little bit of difference. It does sound different. It's not as quite as fuzzy. Um, the, the clipping characteristics is a little bit differently. Is a little bit different. Uh, that's all just because of the EQ going into this, the uh, the op amp and where it's being clipped at. And of course, whenever you're soft clipping in that fa in that sort of fashion, there's a little bit of clean signal that comes through as well. And um, it's just it's just the way it works. So um, all right. So now let's. Uh, Let's look at a couple different circuits that others have said are transparent. So again, this is as transparent of an overdrive and distortion circuit as I can create, um, trying to make sure we're not taking away any highs or anything. Uh, and just before, you know, I know that I don't want to get too long winded, but if I did put a tone control in here, for example, uh, let me show you what that would look like. And, um, we can simulate what happens with the highs. I'll put a real simple one in here that's going to basically basically um, be almost like what you'd have with a rat. So let's say 47K and let's call that point oh, um, 0.02. Let's try that. Actually, I think the rat's 0.03, isn't it? Forget offhand. Let's try that. And we'll simulate. All right, so as you can see, um, we're rolling off starting at about 600 hertz, 800 hertz, all the way down. This being 20 hertz over there, you're, you're probably not going to hear that on a guitar amp, anyways. Uh, but so we're taking off a bunch of highs. If we roll that tone control back, so let's uh, let's say we're using 10K, so it's just barely barely on on the tone control. Simulate the same thing. All right, so it gives you, starts about 2K. Now it's starting to taper off those highs there. So you can kind of see whenever you add a, a passive tone control like that, what it's kind of doing to the circuit. All right, so first of all, um, let's look at the basic blues breaker circuit. We'll look at the schematic, run the EQ curves, and uh, do the same thing. Well, we won't do the same thing with Klon because Electro Smash already did it for us. So <laughs> we'll take a look at what they did. I've showed this before on some videos, but uh, this is the Blues Breaker. And um, again, super easy going into an op amp, uh, going into a inverting op amp stage where it's soft clipping. Uh, this right here is a tone control, just dividing it in half. So basically assume it's a linear tone control and it's set at noon. And let's simulate that. 
All right, so when you look at the EQ curve for the blues breaker style pedal, here's what it's really doing. Um, you're actually taking off quite a bit of bass up into the midsection. It's rounded and peaked uh, in a very shallow fashion. So it's not like a huge spike at one and a half K. Um, but it is, it's, it's, that's kind of the peak and it's tapering off a bit from there uh, when, with the tone control set there. And you're really losing a, a, quite a bit of bottom end. But like I explained earlier, when you're creating a good overdrive, you really are going to do that a lot of the time so you don't get too fuzzy of a sound. So if we change that tone control, assuming a 25K uh, tone pot, let's say, um, uh, let's say 5K, oops, 5K on this. And of course that leaves us with 20K. And now let's see what happens here. All right, so a little bit of difference there. Got more highs, of course. And let's go the other way. Let's go, let's go drastic. 2K and 23K. All right, dumping quite a bit of treble to ground. You know, it's a, that's what we would kind of expect when you turn the tone control down, of course. Uh, this, just so you know, this right here, that's because of that inverting op amp stage where it flips the, the signal out of phase. Uh, not really out of phase with you necessarily, it's, but within the circuit it's flipping, that next stage goes out of phase, this is inverting. And of course, let's go to Electro Smash. This is their, they've already ran the plots on what happens when you turn the gain all the way up from zero to up. So that's what you see here. The bottom line is the gain all the way down. Top line is the gain all the way up. So it's peaking at 1K. So even though the circuit sounds fantastic, a lot of people have called it transparent. Um, I, I agree that it sounds great even when it's ran clean. It's really not transparent when, uh, when, when you look at the EQ curves. All right, so let's, uh, let's go ahead and play through um, those type of circuits real quick, just so we can kind of get a sound in comparison. All right, so as I mentioned, I don't have an actual Klon here right now, uh, nor do I have an actual old school blues breaker. But uh, as you probably know, the uh, small tumness is based very closely on that type of uh, circuit. And uh, the Morning Glory is pretty close to that blues breaker style circuit. So I figured uh, we'll run through those just to kind of give you an idea of the difference between a lot of transparent overdrives. Two, now don't get me wrong, I love both these types of circuits. Uh, whether it's the, the Tumnus or not, that's, that's a great sounding circuit, as well as the Blues Breaker style uh, circuit. They're both great. They're both completely radically different to me, but they're both great. So let's, uh, let's show you what I mean. So again, clean tone. So by comparison, here is that Blues Breaker style circuit. Love that sound, it's a great sounding pe uh, pedal, great sounding circuit. By comparison to Tumnus, you're gonna notice this 1K peak here. Once more, just for fun, because I like the way it sounds. All right, so I hope this kind of helps explain a little bit more than my previous video, uh, that you really don't want a truly 
absolutely completely transparent uh, overdrive or distortion. Generally speaking, maybe you do. I don't know. I mean, I don't know. It's up to you. But um, I know a lot of people, it, when they say transparent, and I saw this in the comments as well, what they're really wanting is the least amount of effect on their core guitar signal. So I would say, for example, the, that Klon style circuit, it does add that 1K bump. Uh, but sometimes you really want that, especially um, depending on what type of amp you're going in. And it, it's fantastic to uh, a Fendery amp or anything with, um, you know, that kind of needs a little bit more mids, kind of needs, needs a little bit more warmth to it. Um, the Bluesbreaker style pedal, again, it's a great sounding, great sounding pedal. A um, little less bass, a little more high end. It's, it's a cool thing. So hope this helped you. Uh, if you like these videos, make sure you subscribe, and we'll see you next week with a new video. Thanks for watching.